All right, so let's look at an example of when Newton's method fails. So when you use Newton's method to approximate the value of a function, you're basically just, uh, you're going to be given an x1 or an x0 or an x2 or something like that. You're going to be given an initial point to start with, and you're going to perform iterations using the Newton's method formula from that point again and again and again to find subsequent points that should, in theory, each time get you closer and closer to the actual value of the point you're trying to approximate on the uh, function you're given. But if you remember, if you haven't watched the, my video, other video on the uh, basic concepts behind Newton's method, why Newton's method works, exactly how it works, and what we use it for, that would probably be a pretty good idea right now to give you adequate background for this video. But just a quick recap of part of that on the failures. Um, if your f prime which is what you're looking at uh, when you, as, as part of Newton's method. When you, if you're f prime of a function, or if the derivative of a part of a function uh, for your uh, x1 or x2 or x17, it doesn't really matter, so how we can write that more appropriately is for any xi, any iteration that you do, if this equals 0, then that just means that yeah, okay, here's a little graph, and, and you have a, a function on your graph, and you, you tried some points, you know, let's say here was x1, here was x2, and then you go here, and this is your x3 right here. Your tangent line to that is going to be horizontal because this is when f prime of x equals 0. You're always going to have a horizontal tangent line. So, and, and this is another reason behind why the derivative of any constant is always zero, because uh, you're going to always get a horizontal tangent line when you graph that. So, uh, let's look at an example function in which we're going to actually see this happen uh, when the first derivative uh, of one of our iterations is going to be zero. So, if we remember correctly, the formula for Newton's method, if you watch my other video, is uh, given by xi plus 1, let's write that a little bit better, xi plus 1 is equal to xi minus, this rational here, f of xi over f prime of xi. All right, so this is the formula we're going to use to perform our iterations. Let's look at the function, uh, let's say, f of x equals x minus 2 squared minus 1. All right, so let's perform some iterations here. Also, first, we're going to be evaluating this function with an initial x1 of 2. Okay, So here's the function we're going to evaluate, and here is our initial x1. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. I think the first step that's a good idea here is let's go ahead and take the prime of, uh, of this function so that we'll know what... Uh, what we're plugging in when we're doing this portion of it, we're taking f prime of xi. So uh, f prime of this function here is just going to be x minus 2 squared minus 1 prime. All right, so for this entire piece here, we're going to need to just use the sum rule, which is just the derivative of this part plus the derivative of this part. So we already know the derivative of negative 1 being a constant is just going to equal 0. So this can be crossed out. We don't even need to worry about it because it's just saying the derivative of x minus 2 squared minus 0. So we don't need to worry about that. So now all we really need to worry about is just x minus 2 squared all of this prime. And if we look at this function, it, it may look a little scary. I mean, we have this uh, this entire thing here raised to the second power, and well, man, what do we use? Do we do we need to use the difference rule in here? No, no, no. Let's just simplify this. All we need to do: look at this function. Think about it as just uh, 
blah, we don't care about what's inside to the second power. So what do we do when we have a function, and let's, uh, let's make some more room for ourselves here. What do we do when we have a function like x raised to the second power, when we have just x squared? Well, we don't worry about it. We know that x squared prime is just 2x. So we can, in essence, we're just bringing down this power into the front of the equation. Well, why can't we do the same thing here? We can. Let's just bring down this power. So give ourselves a little bit more room here. We know that, based on that rule, this equation right or no, this equation, this little piece of this function right here, the derivative of that is just 2 times x minus 2. So all of this is your f prime of x. We're done. We don't need to worry about anything else. So we have this, uh, we have our, our f prime now. Man, that highlighting is terrible. We have our f prime. And we can write this down for future reference. So let's just go on to another slide and copy down some of our information from here and uh, incorporate our derivative into that so that we'll have uh, more information to work with. So let's just quickly go here and say we know that we're going to be needing x i uh, plus 1 equals x i uh, minus f of x i. Uh, let's make that cleaner. f of x i over f prime of x i. So we have that from our previous slide. That's our formula. We know that our equation that we're evaluating is this one right here, is f of x equals x minus 2 squared minus 1. So f of x equals x minus 2 squared minus 1. And we're evaluating this for an initial x1 equal to 2. All right. So everything looks good there. And we have our derivative right here that we need to go ahead and copy down. So we know that f prime of x is 2 times x minus 2. So f prime of x equals 2 times x minus 2. So this is all of the work we've done up to this point consolidated uh, very cleanly into one piece. So let's go ahead and let's start evaluating using our uh, Newton's method formula for x2. So let's go ahead and find x2. We know that x2 equals xi. xi in this case is our x1. So it equals 2 minus f of xi. So let's just write in parentheses where we uh, where we would have had an x here, so parentheses, 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 minus 2, parentheses, squared, minus 1, uh, yes, yeah, minus 1, and then on the bottom, the derivative, so 2, parentheses, 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 minus 2, parentheses. All right, so now we can go in and we can fill in our values. We know this is going to be 2, this is going to be 2, and let's just do some quick math here. This is equal to 2 minus... 2 minus 2 is just 0 squared, so we all only are left with a negative 1 on top. So negative 1 over 2 times, well, let's work, it, let's work with what's in here first. Uh, 2 minus 2 is just 0, so 2 times 0 is just 0. So this is 2 minus negative 1 over 0, or just 2, uh, 2 minus, hmm, Oh, wait, we can't do this, can we? Because there's a zero on the bottom, so who cares about this? This is 2 minus something that is undefined. Which is precisely the point I'm trying to make in this video. Because this function is undefined here, because negative 1 over 0 doesn't equal anything, we have a horizontal tangent line on our function. So let's go ahead and look at what this would look like. Let me just draw a graph that might leave a lot to be desired here. So we have a line, we have another line here, and we have points. Let's say here's what this graph would look like roughly. We have one, two, three, and uh, we have negative one here. So our function is going to have a point here and it's going to look a little bit like this. All right. And our tangent line is just going to look just like this right here because we used an initial 
x1 equal to 2 right there. And so because we did that, the point on the function that we evaluated is 0, uh, which gives us a horizontal tangent line here. So that is why uh, this is one way in which Newton's method can fail, and it, it turns out to be useless, and uh, what it looks like on a graph. All right, so uh, I think we're done here. Go check out some of my other videos if you want to see more information about Newton's method and its uh, limitations.